as he meant uh, said so, uh, so we will uh, today in the today's session uh, so we will mainly focus on uh, automation how automation of uh, aml and kyc is done so how we uh, automate how we can automate uh, the transaction monitoring and customer onboarding process and so nowadays uh, as you know the aml and kyc is a hot cake in the market so uh, a lot of uh, technology companies they are uh, they are coming uh, up with uh, new solutions and uh, they are like um, trying to automate uh, the AML and KYC processes. So um, uh, among them, uh, SaaS is also one of the contender. And um, I work mainly for the SaaS. And uh, we have uh, SaaS has actually SaaS is basically a techni technology company, and it has. Uh, Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Ah. Uh, okay. Thank you. So, uh, could you please move to the next slide? Yeah. So you can see, like, uh, there are uh, a lot of uh, vendors or technology companies or the small companies which are coming up and uh, with uh, new solutions for AML and KYC. So this is a list of few of them. And uh, there are many more uh, in uh, different countries and uh, which are very specific to their own reason. Yeah, and uh, SAS is one of them. And um, so, Hemant, can we move to the next slide? Thank you. So, as you can see, like, uh, so SaaS has basically, it's a technology company, and it has a lot of uh, fraud solutions, and uh, AML is also one of them. So when uh, we had a AML solution, it, it used to be known as AML, but now it's known as compliance solution, and it has a lot of components, like, uh, uh, M alert generation process and CDD and uh, it also has a uh, reporting regulatory reporting and other things so that uh, the client or the bank which uh, which has this SAS implementation so they can uh, so they can uh, direct do end-to-end -end process so, so, so like generate all the it will uh, do the transaction monitoring and it will generate alerts and then uh, uh, it can uh, create regulatory reports and then uh, send the regulatory reports uh, to the uh, agencies and uh, it uh, it has the capabilities like it has the ui user interface where we can perform all the uh, task of uh, finance officer or investigator or the manager and uh, uh, we can uh, so it has a very nice ui where uh, people can uh, where the users can uh, go through different uh, activities uh, according to their role so can we move to the next slide now yeah so this is the history of uh, brief history of uh, SAS AML solution. When uh, so you can see like uh, SAS has started its AML solution in 2004, and uh, say at that time it has only AGP and uh, some uh, UI. And since then it has gone through multiple a lot of changes. And uh, now since 2014 it's known as compliance solution, and uh, now we have uh, come 7.1 version of it. 
and uh, in uh, this version so it's basically uh, if a bank is or uh, it's in different countries so they can uh, implement this solution uh, uh, for different and uh, we can have the country and basically the compliance officer can analyze the data or analyze the risk um, at the bank level and at a higher level where they can uh, see the data from different uh, places or um, And uh, sorry to interrupt you. So they have, we have some technical issues in between. So we were unable to, um, I mean, get what you were telling in the previous slide. So could you please just quickly just walk us through all the previous slides? Sorry to, I mean, sorry to bother you like this. Ah. Yeah, sure, sure, no problem. So, so from uh, this you can start it. I mean, sorry. Maybe uh, Hemant, I can uh, I can share the slides from my uh, my uh, from my end. So that I can just go through it. Is it okay? I mean, yeah, okay. So the, the you can yeah. slide, I mean, so start with the top vendors of AML solutions. From that slide, we can just uh, start it once again. Yeah. Yeah, sure. We can uh, start uh, it. And uh, can I share from my screen? So that I can. It will be. I don't have to ask you again and again to move to next slide. Sorry. Can I share my screen? I mean, I think it will re it requires a ad administration uh, ah, okay. login. Uh, so I... Don't worry. I mean, we, I, we can start from the top vendor of AML solution. If you have your uh, so slides okay, from okay. your side, Come you on. just can so... open just and yeah. Okay, so yeah, so uh, here is the list of uh, so as uh, we know that like uh, EML is a hot topic, so uh, a lot of uh, technology companies they are coming together uh, with uh, they are coming up with uh, some new solutions uh, for uh, EML and KYC. So this is the name of few of the companies which have uh, their own. AML solution and uh, which are being used by different banks and uh, other financial institutions. So SAS is among one of them. So this is basically not uh, the complete list. So uh, in different countries or different regions, we have uh, different uh, small small companies which are um, providing uh, AML solutions. And uh, so th this list may not be complete. And uh, SAS is among one of them. Uh, and uh, SAS is basically known for uh, its statical uh, technologies and uh, machine learning and AI things. So, uh, in SAS, uh, so SAS has a anti-money laundering solution that uh, consists of uh, AML, uh, that is uh, transaction monitoring, and then uh, CDD, and it also has a BI reporting so like uh, whatever uh, alerts are generated for each alert a case is created and uh, so those cases can be directly uh, investigated through the SAS UI and they can be uh, uh, so investigator can uh, put their all the comments and uh, their uh, investigation notes and uh, they can attach the supporting documents and they can at the end they can uh, create uh, a regulatory report out of it and they can send it uh, to the compliance or um, the, the local AML office. So the SAS solution, so uh, as you can see here, so it has uh, AML, CDD and KYS uh, and uh, visual analytics BI reporting. Can we move to next slide, Hema? Okay, so the next one. So this is uh, the description of all like uh, uh, EML and CDD. So this is uh, like uh, how. So uh, in case of CDD, it's uh, basically all these solution uh, EML and CDD. They 
are executed there. so they are basically the program set of programs that will be executed every day uh, in the evening and uh, they will uh, perform the, the transaction monitoring or uh, KYC uh, check the KYC uh, on the data daily data so in today's session we will um, focus on uh, EML part that is transaction monitoring and uh, yeah and uh, next time we can uh, go through with uh, CDD so can we move to next slide now yeah so this is a brief history of uh, SAS solution so here you can see like uh, okay SAS has started its AML solution back in 2004 and uh, since then um, it has gone through uh, different uh, uh, versions of it in different year um, due to uh, technology changes and due to f addition of new features so um, since 2014 it's known as compliance solution and uh, right now we have compliance solution version 7.1 and um, and you can see like in different uh, time period or in different version different um, capabilities has been added to this solution and uh, the current version that has the capability of AML as well as CDD as well as uh, 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 you can um, see all the scenarios for the alerts and all that and uh, entity trials for transaction monitoring so you can see all the information all the alerts of a person everything aggregated at entity level so you can uh, see the same person has how many uh, alerts and uh, for what are those alerts and what are uh, those alerts generated for what transactions so you can see all the information um, at the same place we can move to next slide yeah so this is a higher overview of AML solution so how it look like and what are the features it has so you can see at the bottom it has like a SAS platform so the SAS solutions they run over a platform uh, so that platform will actually consist of uh, like hardwares like servers and uh, some database and uh, some user interfaces and client machines like browsers through which we can access this solution so it has like data management search analytics and report dashboard and reporting and uh, it has a very nice uh, security feature so uh, you can uh, so you will have different uh, roles and uh, for each role you have to define different um, tasks what the person uh, can do and based on that the person can see only those information on this solution so if a person uh, like uh, is manager or his investigator so he will have access to the only those information which he requires and uh, so you can see like on this detection and case generation and uh, rules or analytics so all these are basically maybe like these are technical terms or maybe uh, so the, all these are like uh, the features that the solution have and uh, at the compliance uh, level uh, at the top level if you can you can see like okay at top level we have like SAS AML SAS CDD and we also have SAS FATCA and uh, some other uh, solutions for uh, financial institutions and it has like uh, uh, it can uh, monitor like uh, it has tradings and uh, fraud and payments uh, so it has a uh, lot of capabilities and uh, also it can uh, track the in real time we can check uh, it it has the we can uh, the solution has uh, online 
which you can get the result immediately instantly and uh, it has batch mode yeah, like uh, it will um, in the evening it will uh, some set of jobs will run and they will create the alerts and uh, that alerts can be visible uh, and that will be available to the investigators next morning in the AML solution. Okay, so maybe we can move to the next slide. So, uh, sorry to, to, to interrupt you, Gyan. So, yeah. anyone has any queries, uh, you can uh, uh, reach out uh, to Gyan right yeah. now. Yeah, so if anybody has any query, so you can um, ask directly here or you can also uh, ask me later on uh, in the group. Uh, again, sorry, uh, this is Praveen. I uh, just had one question, you know, since you highlighted about uh, the batch jobs, right? Yeah. And which generates, uh, you know, which has the batch jobs and which runs, you know, overnight. So when we speak yeah. about integration part, how, what is the layer, you know, how does it integrate, you know, is it through, can this be also integrated through APIs? Or you know, with the, let's say the external systems, you know, being with uh, you know any other external houses. No, so uh, in this so, slide, like, I will explain that like how uh, all the process. Uh, so that okay. will be covered in this slide. Okay. So okay. like uh, the system, the email solution, it's uh, it's not just an uh, application or it's uh, that uh, we will install and it will uh, just uh, start. Um, uh, using it, but it has a lot of uh, integration. A lot of things has to be done done for the uh, for its implementation. So I have uh, also heard uh, and uh, about uh, some other uh, solutions that we have in the market. So it's some of them are just like uh, we just go and uh, install them, or some of them are accessed through some uh, APIs. But uh, in case SaaS solution is a bit different. So it's. Uh, it's um, it takes uh, some time for the implementation and uh, it will be everything will be done at the uh, actual site uh, where so uh, I will just take you through this uh, slide so the first thing is uh, so we have data sources okay so data source means uh, so whatever transaction data we have so like uh, today whatever uh, transaction we perform so uh, bank will have a transactional database system in which all the transactions and uh, will be recorded and uh, suppose some new customers are coming to the bank uh, uh, so those information will be stored in some RM system and some uh, they have like some suppose you buy a, someone buys a credit card so the credit card uh, department uh, they will have those information so in the same way, the bank will have their own, uh, they have their own system in which they have all the customer information, account information, and transaction information. And uh, other than that, they also have uh, some, a lot of other information related to customer and uh, their accounts. So when we uh, go to implement a SaaS solution, so there, first we need to get all the data from system from the bank system into a new system that is SAS system so all the data so for that we have like um, ETL process so I am not sure if uh, everyone is familiar with this word so we have so like uh, in the so in the bank system the data will be stored as per banks standard and uh, as per their uh, requirement but uh, for our uh, this solution we may not require all the information so we just take the required information that is uh, that will be used for transaction monitoring and uh, or cdd so we take those information from bank system and we will put into the sas system so sas has a separate set of tables or uh, a database in which we have we stored only those information which will be required to generate the alert or uh, for KYC purpose. And uh, all this, uh, so like bank need to purchase the real hardware and they has 
to have uh, like all the infrastructure set up and then uh, some SAS uh, people will just they will go and they will extract the data from their system and uh, they will uh, uh, bring those information from bank system into SAS system so it's uh, not a, a small task it's a big task so uh, that is why like uh, many institution um, uh, it's a it's a big investment for the banks or financial institution so uh, yeah so, but uh, it's a very beneficial and it's uh, very much customizable and uh, you can uh, add any level of customization to this and um, yeah and uh, the same system can be uh, deployed to any bank or any environment or any country it's not specific to any rules so we have like uh, some predefined set of rules and apart from that uh, you it can be customized at any level the client need so does anyone have any question till now sorry this is mercy i have one question yeah mercy yeah. Uh, this solution is exclusively for conventional financial institution deposit taking or can it be applied to other AML regular reporting entities such as casinos? Some technical issue in sound. So could you please just, uh, I mean, uh, repeat once again just what you have told us? Uh, um, okay, is Marcia, it, please go ahead. Is it my question you're asking about? Hello. Hello. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this is, I'm just. I think I'm there is a technical issue. In... Okay. I'm wondering whether or not uh, this solution can apply to other reporting entities for email purposes, such as casinos. I'm seeing that is the presentation is more geared to financial, traditional financial institutions, but I'm just wondering if you have it and it's applied to other areas such as casinos uh, so Marcia actually uh, the, can the solution uh, answer our query yeah uh, so I will uh, yeah try to answer so uh, this solution can be customized to any level and it can be uh, not only uh, the banks uh, or it can be so for uh, to for this solution to get uh, it work uh, it just need information about the customer and uh, their accounts and transactions okay so we need those information so at least we need transaction information so when whenever uh, we have transaction information so like uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, implemented there I frankly speaking I haven't uh, implemented it for any of the casino and I don't know whether uh, it has been implemented to any casino or not. Uh, maybe I can uh, gather some information and uh, share with you. But uh, as much as I know of this solution, so we need uh, like customer information and account information and transactions information so that we can um, gen uh, so we can uh, generate uh, alerts and uh, alerts can be viewed at uh, account level or customer level. So, yeah, okay. I'm not sure about uh, if it has been implemented to uh, casino or not. But uh, maybe uh, as uh, it's highly customizable, and uh, so maybe we can uh, customize it you know, for casino as well based on their requirement. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. So, any other question? Please feel free to ask him. Again, we can just uh, walk through our uh, next slide. Uh, so, no, so still uh, I need to uh, speak on the same slide. Uh, the next one. Next one. Okay. Yeah. So, once we have the data, so the SAS solution, it has a setup 
tables and it has the some data at, uh, some um, structure uh, in which we need the data so that is basically here so the uh, the we have a set of tables known as a core and a knowledge uh, knowledge base so there is a, a set of tables which are uh, known as uh, ml core database in which we have like uh, okay so um, customer information we store customer information account information and then uh, transaction information and bank information um, and uh, branches and a lot of uh, information that can that will be relevant uh, to analyze a case or analyze and analyze the transaction um, or the customer so all those information are stored in AML core database tables and apart from that we have another database table uh, that is known as knowledge base so AML core database will have the same information that bank have and from that information we run our SAS programs uh, for transaction monitoring and uh, CDD and uh, that will generate some alerts and those alerts are uh, information are stored in knowledge base so there, they are separate there is separate set of tables in which uh, we store those information so this is another schema in which we have uh, we store other information so like ML core will have like uh, one year of data and we aggregate those data uh, and uh, because uh, when we do the transaction monitoring it will uh, use we'll look back to the one year data so we'll see the number okay how many transactions has been done in the past one year or six month or one quarter by this person or um, at what branch and what locations so so we have we will have all those information which will be required by the uh, to gender, to do the transaction monitoring and uh, when alerts are generated they will be stored in a separate uh, place they, that is known as knowledge base and from knowledge base uh, we have like a uh, five year or ten year information we store their information for five year or ten year depending on the bank or financial institution requirement so like if they want to see okay 10 years back whether this customer has any alerts or not so or five years back so as per their requirement we uh, they can uh, store the data in uh, in knowledge base and uh, so and uh, whatever reports or alerts are generated they are again uh, so we have a uh, tool uh, to visualize those uh, alerts and then we can uh, the system also has a very nice uh, uh, reporting it uh, it can show you like okay how many alerts has been generated today it can show you how many alerts were generated in past uh, a week or month or three months and uh, uh, so that you can analyze like okay what is the frequency of alerts what kind of alerts are generated more and um, in what location or what branch we have what kind of alerts and uh, what kind of transactions are performed in which area so and uh, what kind of uh, customers are performing what kind of transactions so uh, you can see a lot of uh, reports there and they are uh, built-in reports so uh, that is very helpful for the analysis purpose and uh, client can access all the information uh, that uh, so like uh, either AML or CDD or um, alerts or uh, reports all these information they can uh, access from the their laptop or desktop or even from the mobile devices they can uh, check the, uh, the all this information okay so this so this slide is complete now so does anyone have any queries on like how this system work
Uh, yes, Gyan. Uh, yeah. Gyan, a couple of things. Uh, so uh, from the business rules perspective, which is a component in SaaS, you know, will take care of this, you know, defining the different business rules yeah. for the CDD. So, so like, uh, so for AML and CDD, so we have like uh, set up, uh, we have an UI where you can, uh, the business user, so, so like uh, how we define the rules. So we will discuss with the bank or the financial institution. So they will uh, tell us, okay, so we have predefined some of the, we have predefined rules uh, for uh, which are applicable to most of the countries based. Uh, so SAS has analyzed, like, um, like they have done the analysis in different regions and they have come up with a predefined set of rules that will be applicable for transaction monitoring. And um, apart from that, uh, so the SAS team will uh, work with the client and the bank or financial institution, they will tell us like, okay, what more information they need or what extra uh, tran uh, business rules they want to apply for transaction monitoring or KYC. So that can be implemented as well. So, and that is, uh, so we have a scenario designer. Uh, we have a component in the solution that is called scenario designer in which uh, it's very user friendly so you can uh, so uh, the mainly the uh, technical consultant or who is working for SaaS they will just uh, go and they will design the scenarios and they will define the business rules and uh, so all the business rules that is defined through the UI that will uh, generate a SaaS code and that will be deployed and uh, they will run when we run the daily batch. And uh, they can generate alerts based on the data. Yeah. Again, so are we seeing that again? Uh, thanks uh, for this clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's say that once the uh, errors or, you know, uh, the exceptions are identified, right? So you also have a back office team, you know, working on this. So again, trying to understand which of these components will trigger a task, you know, for a relevant, uh, you know, the back office team uh, saying that there is a task pending and uh, would there be an email alert, you know, which would be triggered to them and would there also be a kind of the RPAs, you know, which we are talking about, you know, what we are seeing in the industry, wherein uh, it does, it captures all the mundane list of activities on a daily basis and it captures, you know, on an automatic basis, right? So wherein there's a minimal uh, involvement of the back office team, you know, in punching the data. So does SaaS help us out, you know, in any of these, you know, identifying the, you know, or is it something that, you know, we have to define from the front end, you know, as to what are the, uh, uh, you know, the list of, uh, you know, task fields, field level, you know, which is, which can be, you know, uh, which cannot be done through manual, but it can also be taken through, you know, through, uh, through a system, you know, as such. Yeah. So uh, actually how it works is like, uh, so bank will bank have their own system, right? And uh, so the SaaS system is uh, a different, a new system. So um, whatever transactions or whatever um, uh, this um, a customer, uh, um, suppose a new customer is coming, so we have a new customer information and uh, new account information, and uh, we have and uh, what about transaction? So all those information will be collected at the day end and uh, that will be loaded into SaaS system. Uh, told you. So it will be loaded into SaaS system through some process that will be defined by SaaS. And uh, so... I'm sorry, is that real time? Is that real time or it will be the end of the day data? That is end of the day data. Okay. So... Uh, we have real time also that I will, I can explain you. Uh, so let me complete the, how it work first. So uh, it will uh, get the uh, data and uh, it will run in the bash mode. So it will uh, load all the account, customer and uh, transaction information into SaaS system. And from, and on top of that, all the rules that we have defined. So all the business rules, uh, scenarios uh, that we have defined for AML and KYC. So they will be executed. So whenever a condition is criteria is matched, it will uh, generate an alert. So 
and uh, after that so like uh, AML system will uh, uh, generate separate set of alerts and uh, suppose KY system uh, will also generate some separate set of alerts so all those alerts are uh, again they are aggregated okay so you can see them uh, so all those uh, alerts uh, will be visible in an UI so that is again a SAS system so uh, when in the, the next day morning when the analyst will come suppose the compliance officer is come or come and he will log into his system he can see all the alerts and uh, like uh, there is a manager so he can see all the alerts at his branch and uh, so he will uh, suppose there are two compliance officer or uh, so he will assign those alerts to the compliance officer or investigator uh, to in to do the investigation and uh, those people they will just go to the so on the same UI you will have all the information the customer information account information and transaction information so he can uh, just click and uh, he can see the all the information there and uh, so sometime the it may be the false positive and uh, sometime that it can be the real so mostly we uh, have very uh, we try not to have any false positive but uh, yeah so analyst will uh, analyze this uh, alert and uh, he will uh, get the information and if he needs some more information so maybe like uh, he can um, uh, get back to the RM system or uh, he can uh, they can uh, uh, get uh, it from the client uh, the customer uh, uh, so they will get all the uh, collect all the information and the the compliance officer he will uh, he don't have to um, he will uh, he just need to uh, go through the uh, information on the UI screen and he can see all the information there and based on which he can decide like okay um, and if he thinks like okay there is some more information required he can get back those information and uh, he can um, uh, if he thinks okay it's a real alert so he can uh, um, attach the supporting document and um, he can uh, send the transaction to the for the reporting purpose otherwise he can close the case so for each alert a uh, new case is generated and uh, the compliance officer he will just go through go on the UI and he will go through all the information and he will do his analysis so the in the manual work what we have reduced that is we don't have to uh, do any uh, manual uh, manual checks so all the information you get on the your screen so all the business rules that you have defined that has been already executed and there is very very rare chances uh, of false positive and um, so based on all the information uh, you can uh, alerts will be generated and uh, in most of the scenario they are um, they are not false positive so they are it's like a, it's a real alert so and the compliance officer has to check and uh, he can either close the case or he can uh, send the case for the uh, to the reporting AMLO office Sure. Thanks, Gyan. Yeah. yeah well. But Gyan, so you know, in, uh, in huh? a short, you know, maybe if at all, uh, since you have already worked on this, if at all, uh, let's see from the management perspective, if somebody mm -hmm. were to ask, you know, if at all, should I really uh, make or build, right? So make as in, you know, if at all, I, what if at all I can, you know, make this, you know, through in-house system or alternatively, if at all, I can buy, you know, this application like SaaS or other, you know, vendors. So again you know coming considering you know the SaaS so to what extent of you know the leverage you know we can really account wherein to what extent of percentage you know can we really reduce the manual uh, effort uh, so um, I'm not from the business uh, uh, user uh, I'm not a compliance officer or anything who is working on the business side so may I just know like okay uh, when you do the uh, transaction monitoring, how you perform right now, how you do manually, 
is there uh, so you i think you should uh, there will be some system uh, uh, still existing in the bank and uh, it will check for uh, some uh, rules right and it will generate some alert and you just uh, have to go through all the you need to collect all the information from different system correct yes true yeah but uh, in this case actually you are not going to collect uh, all the information because uh, we already have all the uh, data so from all different departments so uh, whatever data you have from the rm system or uh, different system so we have all the data in one place and uh, it will generate the alert and um, the system the business rule that we define and uh, actually they are based on some statistical theorems they are not uh, just simple business rules and uh, apart from that uh, like uh, we the sas it takes into consideration lot of a um, uh, lot of um, parameters and variables uh, before it generates the uh, alert and uh, once it has generated the alerts again it check for different set of rules to suppress it suppose uh, alert has been generated due to some condition but that may not be true or so it checks for diff some s different set of rules to suppress uh, them and it will report only the alerts that are most possible and uh, in the system we have like uh, uh, we have uh, data uh, for a year and uh, we have aggregation so the before we get the data into our sas system we do lot of aggregation of the values that are required so like okay how many person person is doing how many transactions in a day in a week in a month at what branch so we have data at different level and uh, that helps uh, a lot in the alert generation process or transaction monitoring and uh, hello yes ma'am please go yeah so uh, sorry so uh, right now uh, we also have like online process so apart from that um, so at the same time when it's generating alert it it also consider the other things like uh, pap uh, and uh, watch list uh, so we have all the data from watch list uh, from different uh, uh, agencies so at, at the same place so we also check uh, do lot of checking and uh, once everything is done then only uh, these alerts are generated and uh, apart and uh, once alert is generated it's not just like uh, it will not just tell you like okay this is the alert but it will give you complete information it will generate a case it will create a case automatically in the system and that case will have uh, all the informations like okay this is the customer and this is the account and this is the transaction and suppose you have a uh, few uh, suppose the customer uh, is a joint uh, so suppose account is a joint account right so it will bring the information of the related uh, the secondary account holder and other parties as well suppose it's a business account so it will bring all the information uh, and uh, it will uh, aggregate all the information and it will um, before uh, it generate the alert and all the information when it create the case you will have all the information for uh, the analysis and uh, the compliance officer he just has to go and uh, see the alert case and he will uh, go through the case and uh, he will uh, like uh, if uh, some if he find some additional uh, information he can uh, update information or he can put note of uh, it and, uh, and that that's uh, basically part of ui so uh, the ui is also very supportive for the analysis purpose and uh, it um, yeah so it it take uh, all the information and uh, it's very easy to do the reporting uh, so like um, at the end of the day whatever uh, transactions you have uh, it generates a report and you can send it to the uh, yeah, uh, to the agency or uh, come a emlo office 
So I, I, I don't say like uh, SaaS uh, one is the best one, but uh, we have a lot of uh, like a uh, lot of uh, all the most of the system online system that we have right now. So they are basically reducing our um, so they are reducing a lot of manual work. Dan, so you are online. Yeah, so any other question? Hello. Uh, nothing from my end. Uh... Maybe we can move on to the next slide. Hello. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So we will move to the next slide. Yeah. Does anyone have any question? Hello. Yeah. Hello. Yes, Gyan. Can you able to hear me? Yeah, I I can hear you. Am I audible to everyone? Okay. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Okay. Just... Yeah. So we'll uh, move to the next slide. So. <laughs> uh, Himan, can you please move to the next slide? Uh, the yeah, so this is like uh, uh, business process that uh, uh, it supports. So like um, LOX and risk factor. So we analyze them and based on that uh, each entity will have alerts and um, so it checks whether the uh, that customer already have a case created or not if the case is created so it will uh, add uh, this uh, alert information to the existing case if uh, it do, uh, customer don't have any case so it will uh, create a new case and um, the case will go to the uh, investigate for investigation and if uh, it's during our analysis um, if uh, compliance officer really finds it's suspicious and it should be reported so it will be reported uh, it will be included in the SAR report and it will be reported to the uh, AML office otherwise uh, yeah it will just close the case So maybe you can move to the next slide. Yeah. So actually, when we say, say uh, um, transaction monitoring, so that is uh, called as AGP alert generation process in AML uh, in SaaS. So it basically contains lot of scenarios. So scenarios are basically the business rules uh, that indicate a situation when uh, an alert will be generated and uh, so we have like uh, two type of scenarios so one is uh, the actual scenario that will uh, that will be uh, that will create an alert and the next one is risk factor so risk factor is um, is basically it will uh, check for some criteria and it will uh, add value to the uh, so it will uh, enhance the probability of uh, alert generation or uh, creating a case so basically uh, we have uh, so it, uh, we check different data 
and we, uh, we have the set of business rules and uh, we check the data based on against those business rules and we create some values we generate some numbers and we try to see if that number is between some range then an alert will be generated and we consider that like uh, this transaction has to be reported and uh, so if that number is not between those range like uh, some minimum and maximum value so if so then uh, we do not uh, consider those alerts uh, so those cases for alert so like risk factors are basically it uh, it will check uh, and it will add the values to it will add uh, enhance the values so it uh, increases the probability of uh, alert generation so can we move to next slide yeah so for each batch run so the alert generated are uh, ranked and they are prioritized and uh, in relation to other alerts generated during that day and um, each alert uh, alerts risk is uh, expressed as a number so and um, if there is uh, uh, some fa risk factor so it will increase the number and based on and we check those numbers and uh, based on that uh, an alert is generated and uh, alert can be also generated manually just going through the u uh, just uh, like uh, we can go to the ui sas aml ui and there we can see like okay we can generate an alert for uh, EML or we can generate an alert for CDD so and uh, but in that case we need to uh, fill in all the information manually so we need to provide okay for whom the alert is generated uh, and um, so all his customer information account information and transaction information all all has to be uh, updated manually in the system and when it is done by the batch process so it brings all the information so user don't have to do anything yeah so next slide please yeah so this one so it it tell you like a, a high level of like how the agcp scenario run so like uh, it's basically a process of filtering so in the input side we have all the information like customer information account information transaction information and all these information are again they are aggregated on monthly basis and quarterly basis and yearly basis so that we call uh, we call as a profile so we have two type of profile customer profile and account profile so we uh, and also Yes, uh, we have the data at uh, group level so at household level or at the organization level so um, we have uh, those information and we provide all those information and then um, we have like so if you see in this diagram so we have like three scenarios uh, so uh, we have n scenarios and there are two risk factors so if only scenario scenario is uh, mass then a risk is generated so it's a like it's a ro low risk and if uh, suppose scenario and risk factor both are matched then it's a medium risk and if scenarios multiple scenarios are uh, generated if multiple scenarios are hit and uh, then some risk factor along with some risk factor then it's a higher risk if only risk factor is hit or we find mass only for risk factor then it does not generate any alert but we will consider those transaction as a possible alert and we will consider them in the future
so the system will uh, make a note of those transactions or those customers and accounts like okay uh, of their behavior like okay this uh, this is the behavior of the customer or account and uh, they will consider them uh, as a uh, input uh, for the next alert so this is uh, like uh, how the system work and how like AGP process alert generation process work in SAS and uh, yeah does anyone have any question okay so we'll move to next slide So this is like uh, uh, this is not all, but uh, just an example of like the categorization of the scenarios. So like uh, web different scenarios and risk factors. So for our ATM or phone activity, we have seven scenarios, uh, and these these all are inbuilt scenarios. And for cash activities, we have eleven scenarios, and uh, for dormant account and insurance account transaction, insurance policy closing, loan account, uh, mass transaction, registration or status, risk list. So all these are the categorization like, okay, uh, what kind of different scenarios we already have. And even the inbuilt scenarios can be modified. So suppose uh, banks, uh, suppose a client says, okay, we need, um, uh, some uh, like some cash activity so for some bank like uh, the maximum uh, like uh, if uh, a 50,000 is withdrawn from a uh, account or some cash activities is done above 50,000 then that will be considered for alert but maybe some other bank or some other in some other countries that not may not be the case so we can update uh, the these scenarios according to the need of the customer and according to the country specific rules apart from that we can have as many as manual error manual scenarios so like in my current implementation uh, we have like uh, more than uh, more than half of the LR scenarios are uh, user defined so like user have asked, okay, they want this kind, they want this, they want this. So we can have implement all the business rules that client ask. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Yes, I was, yeah, it's the concerning unusual aggregate behavior. I can see the scenarios you have one and then the risk factors 11. I don't really understand how it is. It appears to me that the scenarios are to always be higher and then the risk factors that the system will pick should be lesser than the scenarios because some of the scenarios may not be as risky as uh, those that will be marked as risk factors. So can you explain okay. that to me? yeah so actually both these scenarios and this factor they all are basically the rules set of rules okay so okay. for like uh, unexpected uh, so like uh, yeah un unusual aggregate behavior so like uh, we have this uh, one rule that will actually trigger an alert but we have 11 different rules that will not generate the alert but uh, it will add some uh, uh, it will increase the probability of uh, generating the alert so like uh, i explained in the previous slide so if only risk factor scenario so these are basically the business rules okay so if the business rule of an risk factor is matched so that will not generate an alert okay uh, but if a scenario uh, conditions are matched then an, an alert will be generated but 
if a scenario and alert risk factor both are matched together then it will generate a higher risk the level of risk will be higher so basically we categorize the risk so as low medium and higher so if a risk is high that means okay it need immediate action and compliance officer need to close the uh, investigate the case and uh, it need more focus and uh, okay uh, then compared to a lower risk or medium risk so this is basically the rules okay. uh, so we have, have 11 rules that will enhance the uh, level of uh, alert level of the risk okay, okay. thank you thank you very thank much you. thank you any other question Can I have one query? So, yeah. Scenarios and risk parameters are bank. That which category high risk as per their business, right? Yeah. Hello. Shall we move to right now? Uh, Hemant, sorry, I did not hear your question correctly. Can you please repeat it? Yeah, sure. Scenarios and risk factors will by the bank or a financial right their activity. Hello, sorry, I, I Hemant, sorry, I did not hear your question. Can you please repeat the question? Can you able to hear me now? Uh, your voice is very low. Okay. I don't Can know. Can you able to hear me now? Uh yeah, better than previous. Okay. So my query is so all these uh, scenarios will be you know depends upon the bank or a financial institution which active which category will be I mean uh, very high risky to to their industry or uh, or a financial institution, right? Yeah, yeah. So all the uh, so all this like uh, this is like uh, inbuilt one. and they can have like uh, again in the bank if they want like they want uh, suppose 10 more risk factor for cash so they can add, we can add 10 more risk factor okay and and if they want to reduce some of these uh, uh, scenarios or they want to reduce the numbers as well or risk as well they can reduce it right yeah yeah it it basically um, it depends on the country specific and the client specific so whatever they want so they can we can do with that we can even change the criteria we can change the numbers we can create new so uh, or we want to disable some of them we can do that and okay. basically uh, once the implementation is done so the sas team and the business team they sit together and they actually run this process multiple time and uh, they check the number of scenario alerts generated um per day so on the same data they will uh, change the different parameters and uh, they will try to see the number of scenario generated suppose a bank has uh, only very few compliance officer so they can't afford a very large number of scenarios right so they need to reduce the number of scenarios so they will change the parameter they will ask to change the parameter or they will ask to some uh, many things uh, to increase the level of uh, uh, risk so based on that like a uh, number of alerts generated will be lesser so that is known as that activity is known as scenario tuning so we do scenario tuning once all the implementation is done so that bank will have only the restricted number of alerts uh, Okay, I'm done with my query. Thank you. Ah, Shall we move to the other, uh, next slide? Yeah, sure. If uh, anybody have any question, they can ask. Or, yeah, so like this slide is same as the um, previous one. So uh, an alert is generated when actual values are matched, greater than expected values. So like. when whenever we define so like uh, deposit amount in 
excess of expectation or the withdrawal is excess of expectation or deposits counts in excess of so all this so we have all this information so when we check uh, what is the actual so suppose the number of withdrawal is uh, suppose 10 in a day so if the customer do suppose uh, is doing uh, suppose uh, 15 withdrawal in a day so we we see that okay there is some risk right or some uh, uh, we have some limit on the like uh, okay uh, on the cash withdrawal so or the number of deposits or the amount of deposits so if that uh, limit exceeds so an alert is generated otherwise uh, it's not an alert so um, the all the process that uh, we do manually i think uh, it's same but it's automated and like uh, we don't have to check anything manually and uh, we have the system will do everything for us and uh, apart from that it has uh, like um, it's based uh, it applies some statical rules and uh, it uh, on the data that we have and uh, it will uh, suppress the unwanted or false positive um, alerts and it will generate it only the uh, the alerts that has to be generated so yeah, we are pretty done with the scenarios. Does anyone have any question? Okay. So like, uh, so we also have like uh, watch list data. So we collect watch list data from different agencies, and uh, so these are some of the agencies that uh, we get the data. And uh, in our EML core system we uh, feed in this information so that when we have to seek for uh, PEP or some uh, watch list related information we can uh, refer to them and uh, it depends on the again client or like how many list of information client want so that we don't have to do go and search anywhere else so the system will do all the searches and we don't have to perform any manual search so uh, we can have all the like negative news information or we have uh, the watch list information so everything in one place yeah so we can move to next slide yeah so like uh, these are the information like how they are used so like high risk countries uh, that is part of scenarios and PEP is part of risk factor. So transaction involving countries on high uh, on watch list. So it's part of a scenario. So how this information have been categorized. So terrorist on watch list. It's a scenario and non terrorist on watch list or any person who is on watch list that is basically as yes, part of scenario. Yeah, so this is how we uh, utilize our uh, data from different uh, watch list and uh, uh, we use them in our scenarios or uh, risk factor calculation. And apart from that, uh, so the solution also have uh, an UI, so this is a part of UI, it's called scenario administrator. So in scenario administrator, it's basically an UI where uh, the business person can once the implementation is done everything is done so in the future suppose uh, business people or bank wants to update some scenarios they can uh, go to the ui and they can update update the information they can change the criteria they can do anything by themselves and they can deploy the new rules and uh, that is uh, so this ui is known as scenario administrator Yeah, so like uh, you you don't have to like uh, uh, 
wait for the implementation or you don't have to spend more money on the uh, making changes so the people the bank and itself can they can or the biz, even business user can do this by themselves and this is the uh, workflow uh, or the flow of the scenario execution how scenario is executed so like scenario uh, code so when we so when we go to the scenario administrator and we make create some rules and then we deploy it it will generate some codes and uh, that codes are executed and then combine and uh, it basically generates some alerts and uh, those alerts are ranked and uh, we do uh, apply the risk rate ranking of those alerts and uh, then we check for uh, some suppression rule and uh, like uh, maybe some alerts can be false positive so we suppress them and then we aggregate those alert at entity level so like uh, at customer level and then uh, load those alerts into uh, into the system and those uh, like those alerts will be loaded and uh, they will uh, so we basically check for the data so suppose some alerts will have um, so aggregating all the alerts and then uh, they will create a profile of the customer and again suppose uh, a customer was uh, previously in uh, low risk now his risk has been changed to medium risk or high risk so that will be updated to the customer profile so the customer profile will change and it will be like okay now the customer is medium risk or high risk and even a risk a label is changed then also we need to report it so it's a uh, so maybe it's not a uh, the customer already had a alert or he already had a case and um, now uh, he has some new alerts and uh, his uh, risk label has increased and now he is a um, high risk customer from low risk so that has to be again reported to the uh, regulators and uh, so and uh, that is again updated to the at the uh, profile label profile of the customer and uh, all the alerts uh, so you can see like uh, the history of all the alerts so we have information of like uh, 5 to 10 years where you can go and search the information and you can um, search alert uh, so uh, the, uh, the the system also provides uh, search facility like uh, Google so you can go and search uh, alerts based on the name customer name or you can search alerts for uh, um for the for a particular branch or uh, you can search alerts for uh, for uh, at any level uh, we can search uh, alerts or uh, uh, alerts or cases and we can see all the cases which are pending uh, new cases or and we can uh, see the cases by their age like how old a case is and uh, yeah you can see all the information there on the uh, solution so does anyone have any question like how uh, how the system work or how the alerts are generated or how it will be uh, how the case is created or how case is investigated and how MLO report uh, reports are uh, transactions are reported to MLO any queries on that uh, I think some if no one has any queries then we can move to next slide yeah so this is uh, the a sub process of the entity trials uh, so uh, like 
uh, this uh, this feature was not uh, basically earlier and uh, it uh, it has been included in ml 7.1 so it basically uh, aggregate all the alerts of a customer so maybe the alert was uh, a few months back or year back uh, the customer has some alert and now he has some new alert so it will basically combine all the information all the alerts and all the transactions that has been alerted and um, all the information and uh, on the UI you can uh, see a relationship of all the information so like uh, the customer has how many suppose uh, 10 alerts and 10 alerts has uh, uh, so how many alerts are linked to how many transaction so maybe three alerts are related to the same transaction and uh, uh, some other alerts are related to different transactions so you can see all those information in a very nice UI and uh, you can uh, so that that will basically help the in investigator to uh, to uh, he will get a bigger picture of all the alerts and all the uh, transactions and he can um, take decision in a more better way like uh, okay he can conclude in a better way like uh, because he has all the information in one place so that that will help uh, and uh, it also uh, reduce the investigation time like uh, compliance officer don't have to go and look for other information at other place he can get all the information on one page and he can see all the details there Yeah, so I think we're done with this slide. Anyone have any question? Uh, just a question on, uh, for example, you know, the document management system, right? So let's say uh, yeah. another which has popped up, you know, saying that, you know, these documents, you know, need to be uh, checked with, with the customer. So now, yeah. you know, when, when a user is uploading the document, uh, do does uh, Whatever the documents we have, you know, does it get uh, stored in the uh, document SaaS document management system, or is it to be on the repository of the you know the server of the bank? You know, actually, the bank. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, no, no. So all this, uh, it is not. Uh, so all this system, it's not. It will be deployed in the bank itself. So like, uh, it's not uh, SaaS. It will not be on SaaS server or anywhere else. It all this information, all this solution will be deployed. On the bank and like bank will have their own new infrastructure uh, where they will set up new servers and all that and uh, they can have connectivity with their other systems and uh, all the documents they can directly access from their own system and upload it uh, to the uh, to the reports or to the case and uh, yeah, that that will be included there, and it it won't uh, go to some other server or anywhere. It will be there in the bank server. Okay, so that uh, resolves my query of you know the confidentiality during the security and the confidentiality of the information. Yeah, yeah. So uh, it's so I uh, I yeah I have heard like uh, some of the solutions they are like they are accessed through just API and uh, they are not actually installed at the bank side. So, but this is completely in the bank. So, and bank has, uh, so uh, all the information. So this SaaS system will have communication with all the other system of the bank and they can communicate and, uh, uh, and uh, in the SaaS system. So like, it's not like anyone can access and he can check all the information. So like uh, all the information are basically stored at branch level. And basically, we create uh, rules, and uh, uh, we have user groups. And so, like, um, you'll create uh, who, who are the user of the system at a particular branch, and uh, so, and uh, what are their roles? So, de depending on dif the role of the person, they can see the information. Suppose, like, a manager, he can see all the cases but uh, he can go and update all the cases or anything but a, uh, an uh, officer or investigator who is 
who is working on one case or uh, the other user cannot see his case what he is working on or he cannot update his case unless and until he release the case on uh, and it is assigned to him so uh, basically the manager has to assign that case to some compliance officer then only he can start working on it and uh, the rule uh, so the security system is very robust and uh, it's a very uh, like um, uh, very access is very limited the content is very uh, li the access to content is very, uh, limited to uh, the users according to their role so we have role based security okay sure thanks uh, yeah. yeah welcome so any other question okay i no? think uh, yeah yeah i think we don't we may not have any more questions or queries okay okay so uh, I, yeah any other things you would you like to share yeah actually uh, today's session was just uh, mainly focused on uh, like uh, uh, EML and uh, transaction monitoring. Maybe I did not get chance to put more information like how, uh, like CDD work or how other things work. But um, yeah, maybe if uh, people are interested, we can uh, have that as well. Yeah, maybe yeah, and, uh, we can have you know separate each separate session on transaction monitoring. One and one another is CDD and yeah, yeah CDD. We, yeah, we can segregate like that and we can just focus on. Uh, on that each per each uh, particular topic in in the other workshops in yeah. future and yeah. and uh, thank you so much Jan for taking your time and I know you have some issues uh, your kid is not well so yeah. thank you so much for you know taking up time and for your commitment thank uh, you once you. again <laughs> yeah it's okay not a problem thank you actually right. I am also learning a lot you, of Jan. from this group yeah thank you Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, Ganesh.